a dream come true. It's a dream come true. Oh. Hi, I'm Tamara Judge, and this is my husband. My name is Eddie Judge. And we are from the Real Housewives of Orange County. She is. You are. <laughs> You're on the show, too. All right, honey. I'll see you. Love you. Bye, Mama. Bye. <laughs> Tyler might know me as the feisty blonde. Well, there's a lot of blondes on the show, but I'm the, the pint-sized blonde. I'm usually screaming, yelling, but, you know, I've gone like a full circle. Well, not quite a full circle. Wait. No, you're still screaming. I'm yelling. still screaming. Well, that's my opinion! Oh, hello, Tamara. Oh, oh, my God, I get out of here. I have my mom, Sandy, in the back room because people that have passed on in my life are from my mom's side of the family. And plus, she's a huge fan. Oh my gosh. Welcome. It's seriously, so wonderful to meet you. I'm so thrilled. And so you're familiar with the show. I think for me, it's important to really explain the process so you have an understanding going into this, what to expect. I think that um, Eddie's more of a skeptic than I am. I'm not a believer. I know about body language. I know about all these techniques and skills that people know on how to manipulate others. And I know she's a believer, uh, oh, yeah. but she- I believe in a lot of things. The only other thing is sometimes people bring objects. Did you bring any objects today? I did. Oh, cool. Do you mind if we lay them out on the table by chance or just have them there? Yeah. Cool, perfect. Awesome. And then Eddie, did you have any objects? I do not. Okay, no worries. I'm just gonna give it a sec, see what comes in. We'll go from there. So, let's see. Yeah. All right. There's a reference on mom's side of family. Mm -hmm. This is in a living context, so mom's still here? Um, mom is in the other room. Oh, cute. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. So yeah. great. Your mom's side of family comes through really strongly, which is just yes. good to keep in mind. I knew it, I knew it. There's this woman that's coming through connected to your mother, and she's like intense and adorable and lovely, but she's like the main reason why I'm here today, sincerely. So <laughs> I knew it. She's one of the big ones. Yeah. My mom, it's my mom. She's bringing me back to childhood. There's a story of a small child preparing food, um, and we're talking little, like five, okay. six, seven, making eggs, for example, like on the stove. It's just like a situation where a child basically doesn't have a parent there to make this food, and a child does it like very, very young, like very, very little. That could, I'm not sure my mom can clarify this, but sure. it could have been my mom because my grandmother was hospitalized most of her life. Makes sense. My mother, my mother went away to an institution when I was seven, so I kind of stepped in to help take care of my dad and myself. She was schizophrenic. Oh and she spent a lot of my mom's childhood in the hospital. Wow. My mom had a rough time. I never saw signs of my grandmother being schizophrenic. As I got older, I heard stories. She had different episodes that would happen and then they would put her back in the hospital. I didn't know really any of that. I didn't right. know that she suffered. She was just my grandma. We would sleep on the couch. I'd spend the night at her house a lot. She was just the sweetest, tiniest little thing you've ever <laughs> seen. She would smoke like a fiend. Ah. Smoke like, a, just sit there with her legs curled. I, she, they were wrapped around seven times, I think. And she'd sit there and she'd just smoke That's all the time. Wow. All the time. What a woman. And I could do no wrong. That's right. Yeah. That's why you loved her. Well, yes. <laughs> yes. That's right. So. What an amazing woman. That's right. Your, your grandmother didn't want all of what your mom had to deal with to affect her later on. She didn't want to hold your mom back in any capacity. That much I can tell. Like, she's very focused on, like, I know you were independent, and I had to do various things. Um, all of this is revolving around her mother's pride for her and appreciation for your mother for taking the reins. Thank you for doing this at the hardest time. Like, it's yeah. very much an appreciation for her. It wasn't my grandmother's choice. She was very sick. So to hear her say that to my mom, you're acknowledging that you weren't there for me. You know, I pretty much raised myself. You know, that's, that's nice that she acknowledged that and she was very thankful. What was your grandmother's name? Clarabelle. Clarabelle. <laughs> it's like the most grandma name ever. <laughs> that's her wedding ring. Oh, I love it. She's very, very aware of the fact that you two are together and very connected. And I think she might be bringing through some of your family. Do you not know all of your family? Or is there like, I know it's kind of a weird question to ask, but like, 
Yeah, they're only talking about biological, biological, biological. Oh, so like, my goodness. So there's a couple people who passed, like I can tell, like prematurely, that's coming in and it's, I can tell it's biologically connected to you, but not so much like e emotionally. And I don't really know why that is. They're talking about biological family to Eddie and Eddie's an adopted, an adopted person. Have you recently been interested in like exploring your genealogy or like looking back at your genetics or anything along those lines? To what extent do you know your family tree? Um, I don't, I don't. Um, he doesn't. I recently did a DNA test. Nice. Uh, both Tamara and I did it. I think she had the idea of getting us genetically tested to see. Because he didn't know his dad. I don't, I don't have any family history. Wow. Not deep down to where I'm really from. Yeah. Um, but that's really the extent. Nice. You know, I've always lived in the present, never really yeah. looked back. Awesome. I love that. And it's resilient. Well, I've kind of poked. <laughs> she has. Yeah. Well, we so, have an idea of who his dad might be, but we don't. He doesn't necessarily want to reach out, but I, but I feel like he should. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious, but I'm not interested. Yeah. Not yet, anyways. I think you're not interested because you're afraid of getting hurt. That's understandable. Sorry. Yeah. I'm not a psychiatrist, but <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah. I think when the way this comes in, for some reason, they're having me talk about you going back, family history. They're having me talk about sister, 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 sister. And then they're like, let this go, let this go, let this go. I don't know what this is, so just one, one thing at a time. Do you have a sister? I do. Okay. The way this is coming in, for some reason, is they're just having me acknowledge, like, sister. And then <laughs> the way this is coming through, it's like, know who to care for, know who's just going to use you. The way that this comes in, and that, I try, always try to be diplomatic in every message that comes in, but that that's just the sense. way it's coming through. Yeah. That makes sense. In whatever context that applies, I know it's personal stuff. It, it just is basically the way of saying, hey, it's okay. You don't have to force something that isn't working. You don't have to force something that doesn't work. The most interesting moment was uh, when he talked about my relationship with my sister, and um, basically the other side was confirming that it's not a healthy thing. Never really was, but it's still family. My wife knows a little bit about it uh, only because of something that my sister did. But recently, she reached out to me and apologized and wanted to have a relationship, but I still didn't have 100% feeling. He just solidified that. If you find that that's the case, know that that's their way of saying, it is what it is. When people show their true colors, listen. It's like when people show who they really are, pay attention. There is a, uh, this is gonna keep in mind really random. You're gonna end up writing a book. There's actually a book emphasis coming in. I've had so many offers I to bet. write a book and I just, I just wanna make sure it's on the right subject. For some reason they are having me acknowledge talking about a very intimate personal look. It might touch on some of these kind of real personal, real intimate family stuff. Um, My daughter. Right, so yeah, I feel like that's gonna be something that is important to have your voice heard. Yeah. And express yourself because it can be a tool for healing. As well. It's a slippery slope for me because I'm still estranged. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I think it's one of the hardest, most painful things to go through as a parent. It's like having a child die, but they're still alive and it, they're untouchable. And so many parents don't want to talk about it. So yeah. it's really hard for me because I want to be the voice and I want to help, but I don't want her to get upset. Yeah, and that's really admirable of you. And I, and I know, I know in my heart, like I could feel it like she's gonna come back. She will, she will, absolutely. Yeah. I think patience is gonna be necessary with this because sometimes as hard as it is, we just kind of have to write out these difficult times, but I can guarantee you, <laughs> she will come back. Yeah. If I've ever given a prediction on the show <laughs> that I feel is accurate, I feel like yeah. there will be an opportunity to make amends, to say what needs to be said, and yeah. that'll happen. I am actually really blown away, and it's everything I expect it to be. Thank you guys, seriously. You. I'm just really thankful that he was here today, and we had the honor of sitting down with him. Are you? Starstruck. Oh, Come here. Okay. Don't overreact. No way! Oh my god. Hi. Can I hug you? Oh, yeah. oh. oh 
my gosh. Nice How have you dealt with this gift that he has? Well, it's different. It is, it is definitely. <laughs> I mean, did it start dry. when he was real little? Well, he wouldn't tell me about people who passed away when he was little, but he would just say things that children don't say. Would you tell people? No. No. Because you probably would have been put in an institution. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. No, it's true. I, I believe he has a great soul and a great gift. It seemed very natural and organic and, and real. Have a good one, you guys. Squash all those things about reading our body language and our smile, I mean, <laughs> all that. I saw your eyes bugging out a few times. I was impressed, yeah. The biggest thing that I took away today is that I do have hope um, to reconcile with my daughter, and he does see that happening. Hearing him say that just was the best thing I could have heard.